Hey, what's going on people? I hope you guys are doing good. Today, we're talking about the Galaxy Z Flip 4. We're gonna go over several tips and tricks that you should try as soon as you get your brand new Flip. Before we dive into the video, if you guys are interested in picking up a Flip 4 or a Fold 4, please be sure to use the links found in the description. They are my affiliate links. I get a small portion back and it just helps support me and the channel. So the first thing I recommend is getting a few accessories for the Z Flip 4. This includes like a case, screen protector, and maybe a smartwatch because if you haven't noticed, I don't have my Apple Watch on. So let's talk about those now. So first and foremost, the case that I'm using is from Spigen. This is the Airskin case. I love it because it matches the violet or purple Z Flip 4 like perfectly. Plus it has a matte texture, so it helps prevent, you know, fingerprints and smudges and things like that. And it's just a really snug fit. I'm gonna drop a link down in the description so that way you can check for up-to-date pricing. But at the time of this video, there is a coupon, so that way you can save 10 bucks if you decide to purchase one on Amazon. I'm also gonna leave links to a few of my other favorite cases down in the description. Now, when it comes to a screen protector, Samsung does have one pre-installed for the inside display. However, if you wanna step it up a notch and get one that's slightly better, Whitestone Dome does make one. However, if you're new to foldable phones, I don't recommend taking off the screen protector because you could damage the screen. However, if you're tech savvy, it should be fine. And the install process for the Whitestone Dome screen protector is really easy. They also make one for the cover display, which I definitely recommend picking up regardless if you're new to foldables or not because it protects that outside display and you're gonna wanna do that. The last accessory I wanna talk about is this. For all the haters out there that are always getting on to me about my Apple Watch, as you can see, I switched it up and I have the Galaxy Watch 5. I picked it up in lavender, which matches the lavender Z Flip 4 perfectly. Like, what do you think about this Barney combo? Is this the combo of the year? Should I go purple? I don't know, I'm kind of feeling it. I'm gonna have a full review coming soon, but I really wanna dive into its fitness capabilities and all of its tracking capabilities and see, can I actually use this? Can this replace my Apple Watch? So stay tuned for that. Now, let's talk about the second thing that I recommend that you do, and that's customize your Z Flip 4 with themes, icon packs, wallpapers, all that good stuff. So if you wanna customize your Galaxy Z Flip 4, what you're gonna do is go into your settings, go under themes, and then from here, it's gonna take you to the Galaxy Theme Store. And you can download different themes, wallpapers, icon packs, and always on displays. There's a lot that you can do inside the Galaxy Theme Store. Some of the things do cost money, but there's a lot of really cool free stuff. And you can always go back under the menu and then check out your purchased items and apply any previously purchased themes, wallpapers, icon packs, so on and so forth. It's just a great way to customize the look of your flip and uh, you know, add a little bit of personalization to it. So even though you can customize your icons to the Galaxy Theme Store, the amount of icon packs that you can download from that store doesn't come close to the Google Play Store. The issue is icon packs downloaded to the Google Play Store can't be applied natively. What you have to do is go under the Galaxy Store and then download an app called Theme Park, which is actually associated with GoodLock, which offers tons of customization for Samsung phones. So I have Theme Park downloaded. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it up. I'm gonna go under the icon tab. I'm gonna tap on create new. And now I'm gonna import one of my favorite icon packs from the Google Play Store, which is Pixiful. So I'm gonna tap on icon pack up at the top. And then I'm gonna tap on Pixiful. And it's gonna load up. So go ahead and give it a minute. Now you can see all my icons have changed. I'm going to save this. I'm gonna give it a name, just uh, JJC is fine. So we'll go ahead and give it the name, tap okay. Now it's going to install. Once it's done, I can go ahead and apply it and it will change all of my icons to the icon pack that I downloaded from the Google Play Store. It's really neat and it's a great way to utilize all of those icon packs that you've previously purchased or downloaded through the Play Store. And as you can see, it changed them out. So when it comes to wallpapers, I really like anime wallpapers, movie wallpapers and things like that. But unfortunately, you really can't download these to the Galaxy Theme Store. The apps that I use are HDQ Walls and anime wallpapers. So HDQ Walls is great for still images. There's tons to choose from. They have Dragon Ball Z wallpapers and other anime. You also have different categories to choose from here. Just a free app that's in the Google Play Store that offers tons of really awesome, high resolution, very vibrant, and even uh, AMOLED wallpapers. Now, anime wallpapers is great for live wallpapers. So as you can see here, I have a Majin Buu live wallpaper on my cover screen. That's really awesome. And I also have another animated wallpaper for my lock screen on my main display. But the anime wallpaper app has tons to choose from. You can categorize them from still images to live. Again, it's a free app. 
has tons of ads though, so I'm gonna go ahead and warn you, as long as you don't mind dealing with the ads whenever you apply these wallpapers, you're good to go. But there's tons of choices in here, and you can really customize your phone and make it yours. So it just dawned on me that some people may not know how to apply a wallpaper, especially a live wallpaper, to the cover screen. Let me show you how to do it. So you're gonna go into your settings, you're gonna go under cover screen, then you're gonna tap on clock style, you're gonna scroll down until you see clock background image, tap on that, and then tap on choose from gallery. And then from here, you can select whatever live wallpaper or wallpaper that you've downloaded. In my case, it was the Majin Buu. Then tap on done, and there you go. From here, you can frame it exactly how you want. You can shrink it, you can make it bigger. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit, so it's about right there. And then once you're happy, you can tap confirm and that's it. So speaking of customization on the cover screen, let me show you a few other ways that you can make the cover screen a little bit more useful, including clock styles and widgets. So let me show you what I mean by customizing the cover screen. If I turn on the display and then touch and hold, I can browse different clocks. These are all the custom ones that I set up. And you also have your, you know, your regular stock clocks that you can choose from. And then if I swipe from right to left, I have my various widgets, such as my now playing widget, cover launcher, which I'll talk about more here in just a minute. You guys are gonna love that. Uh, my weather widgets, alarms, and a bunch of other stuff. You can customize all of this stuff inside the settings to make it a little bit easier rather than doing it right here on the cover screen. So let's do that now. If you wanna customize your cover screen, what you're gonna do is go into the settings, tap on cover screen, and from here, you can tap on clock style to switch up the style of your clock. You have your basic clocks, which will go with your custom wallpaper. And then you have graphical clocks, which are pre-installed clocks that look great. So if I select one, I can tap on customize. And from here, I can switch up like the wallpaper or the background. I can also change the text color. If I select this watch one and then tap customize, I can switch up the characters as well as the text color. So there's quite a bit of customization that you can do with the clocks. If I back up and then go under widgets, from here I can toggle on the widgets that I want to use or toggle off the ones that I don't want to use. If I tap on reorder, I can drag them around and place them in a custom order from possibly most frequently used to less frequent. But that's how you can customize the uh, cover screen. This next tip or trick that I have for you is really awesome. I kind of just mentioned it. It's called cover screen launcher and it gives you... This next tip or... <laughs> this next tip or trick that I have for you is really awesome. I just briefly mentioned it. It's called Cover Screen Launcher, and it gives you the ability to launch apps right on your cover screen. It's really useful for people that are wanting to take advantage of the viewfinder mode on the cover screen and social media apps. You have to download GoodLock and Multistar to take advantage of it, but it's definitely worth it. Let me show you. Worth it? Worth it. If you don't know where to get GoodLock, what you're gonna do is go into the Galaxy Store, and then do a search for GoodLock. You'll see it pop up right here. Just download it and then download the Multistar Companion app. So what Cover Launcher does is it allows you to launch apps directly on your cover screen. For instance, I can go ahead and launch YouTube. I can scroll through my subscription feed, find a video, tap on it, and I can play it right here on my cover screen. That's pretty cool, but I can take this one step further. So I can launch Instagram and look at this, look at this tiny little window. And I'm using the rear camera in order to do this feed. So I can literally use the cover screen as a viewfinder for the rear cameras on the Flip 4. This is so awesome for people that are trying to do like Instagram Lives and things like that, because you're able to use the main sensor on this phone, which is by far the best camera on the phone. That is awesome. And if I open up the phone here, and then go into Instagram here, you can see there's no option to use the cover screen as a viewfinder. So this is a workaround for that feature. That is awesome and it makes Cover Launcher totally worth it. So when using Cover Launcher, you can actually add any app that you want to the cover screen. So I'm under the Cover Launcher widget. I'm just gonna tap the plus symbol. Now I need to open up the phone, log in here. Then tap the plus symbol here, and then tap on where it says recommended apps, select all apps. And then from here, I can add something like TikTok. So I'm gonna go ahead and add TikTok. Now I'm gonna shut the phone, go back to the cover screen here, 
go under cover launcher, tap on TikTok, scan my fingerprints, and there we go. And if you're wondering, yes, you could still use the cover screen as like a viewfinder, but TikTok isn't, uh, isn't really optimized for this like Instagram is. You kind of got to hold it like this in order to get the correct frame, but it's still doable. It's just a little weird, but um, yeah, at least that you can, you can do this. I think that's kind of cool. So speaking of using the cover screen as a viewfinder, you can also do this inside of the camera app. This isn't anything new, but if you're new to the flip, then it's gonna be new to you. And it's one of the best reasons to have a foldable phone like this. So once you're inside the camera app, in the top right corner, there's like this little toggle. It's like a square with like a small square in the top right. Just tap on that. Now cover screen preview is turned on. So if I flip the phone over, you can see I get a preview of what the rear camera is seeing. So that way I can line myself up and then take the shot. That's one way of using cover screen preview. Here's another way. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut the phone and then double press the power button and you can see the camera is pulled up and I have a preview of what the rear camera is seeing. So from here, I can swipe, I can go to video so I could start recording. I can swipe the other way and then go to portrait mode and get a nice portrait shot of myself. And even though this is cropped in, so what you see on the cover screen at this point isn't exactly what the photo is gonna look like. If you want a more realistic look at what the photo is gonna look like, just double tap on the screen and there you go. That is exactly what the camera is seeing. I can double press again and there you go. So how useful is that? Like I said, this is one of the best reasons to get a flip. If we switch back to the regular photo mode, you can also swipe down and then switch to the ultra wide. So look at that. If I swipe down again, it goes back to the main sensor. So like, this is so useful. I can easily just start taking photos right here, right now without having to open my phone. Like I said, one of the best reasons to own a foldable. So another cool advantage of having the flip is the form factor. So I'm able to prop it up like you see here in order to film myself. And if I pair this with cover screen preview, I have a preview of what the camera is seeing right here. And then I can use this simple hand gesture to take a picture or to start and stop recording. So this is great for vloggers and things like that. Or if you just want to do a group photo with your family, you can set everybody up, pose, and then there you go. So staying on the topic of cameras, the Z Flip 4 has a brand new main sensor that lets in much more light. And it's a very capable camera, as you can see by these pictures right here. So first and foremost, I highly suggest that you go out and just take some pictures because I guarantee you this camera will impress you. Now that said, there are a couple features that I wanna quickly talk about because they take advantage of this foldable design. So let's go over those now. So the first thing that I wanna talk about is flex mode inside of the camera app. So if I just flex the phone like this, you can see it shifts the viewfinder up and then I have the shutter button as well as the different modes and settings down here on the bottom. Now there's a little button in the bottom portion of the screen. It's in the top right. It has an arrow with like, that's pointing down and it's inside of a box. If I just tap on that arrow, you can see it switches it out. So now my shutter button is still on the bottom, but my viewfinder is also on the bottom and then all of the modes and settings are up top. Some people might be wondering, how is this useful? Well, now if I were to take my phone and then put it down on a street to get something like maybe a time lapse. So if I go under more and then go under hyperlapse, I can put this on the street without having to lay down on the road to see what I'm shooting and then start getting my time lapse. So think about being in New York, you're like in the middle of the intersection, like on that little median and you wanna get a really cool time lapse. You can do so without having to get yourself dirty and lay on that nasty pavement. It's a pretty cool feature. So the next feature that I wanna show you is under video mode. So under video in the bottom right corner, there's like a box with a circle in it. If I tap on that, it toggles on auto framing. Now what's great is I can put the phone once again in flex mode and kind of use it as like a tripod, prop it up. Now with auto framing turned on, I can start recording, then step over here and it's gonna identify me and then keep me in frame. It's gonna zoom in in order to make sure that I'm center frame and I can walk around and it will track me. Again, this is just great for vloggers or for people doing social media videos and things like that because it's almost like having a cameraman except it's all done on the phone using the wide angle and then cropping in. How cool was that? So there's a lot of other things that this camera can do in terms of software features and also just capabilities. So make sure to stay tuned for my dedicated camera tips and tricks video for the Flip 4 as well as the Fold 4. I will definitely be doing those. Since this is a foldable phone, there's quite a few settings under advanced features and the lab section. So let's go over those now. 
To access these advanced features, what we're gonna do is go into settings and then go under the advanced feature section and then tap on labs. Now from here, we have different features such as multi-window for all apps. So this will force the ability to do split screen for every single app. For instance, Instagram is not natively supported, but if I pull up Instagram here and then swipe up with two fingers like so, I can put Instagram in split screen view or multi-window. So that's definitely useful, something that I highly suggest that you check out and enable. If we go back into our settings here, we also have full screen and split screen view. So whenever you go into split screen view, you can have it automatically go into full screen mode, which gets rid of the taskbar at the top. I usually toggle that off because I don't mind the taskbar, but if you want to take advantage of the full display, you can turn that on. And then if you notice, I've been swiping up to trigger pop-up view or to trigger split screen view. So you can toggle on those swipe gestures right here. So swipe for pop-up view is in the corner here. You just kind of swipe down and you can see that puts it into pop-up view. And then swiping up with two fingers will enable split screen view. So if I go back into say something like Instagram and then swipe up like I already showed you, it puts it into split screen view. So definitely useful features. The last thing that I wanna show you under the lab section is flex mode panel. So if I toggle that on or go into that setting, sorry about that, I can toggle on various apps to take advantage of flex mode panel. Quick disclaimer, some of these apps do not work very good in flex mode. So just remember that. So if you notice that it's a little bit buggy whenever going into uh, flex mode, just go back into the setting and then toggle it off. But if I turn it on, for instance, for Google Chrome, and then go into Chrome here, and then flex the phone. Once I'm in a browser here, you can see it takes advantage of the flex mode by giving me my website up top, and then down on the bottom, I have like the ability to change the brightness, adjust the volume. Um, I have like a mouse track or a trackpad that I can use like a pointer right here. So it almost turns it into a trackpad. That's exactly what it turns it into. I also have the ability to um, pull down my notification shade with the button on the far left. So pretty cool feature. It's not super practical, but if you wanna take advantage of having a foldable phone, it's a great way to do so. But keep in mind, not every single app is gonna work good with flex mode, like I said. Sometimes you'll get like a really distorted image up top. And in that case, you need to go back in and toggle it off. The last couple tips and tricks that I have for you have to do with gestures and how you can get the most out of them. So let's go over those now. So first and foremost, let's go over different gestures that you can do. So you're gonna go into your settings and then tap on the search symbol and then do a search for gestures. From here, you can just tap on motions and gestures under the advanced features and then tap on motions and gestures again. And from here, you have a list of different gestures that you can do, such as lift awake, double tap to turn on the screen or double tap to turn off the screen keep screen on while viewing, which utilizes the front facing camera to detect your eyes. And it will always keep the screen on as long as you're looking at the display. But keep in mind, this will drain your battery a little bit quicker. You have alert when phone is picked up, mute with gestures. So by putting the phone over the screen, it will mute uh, an incoming call, or you can just flip your phone over and lay it face down on a table. You have your fingerprint gestures. So if you go into there, I can swipe down on the fingerprint scanner to pull down my notification shade, swipe up, pushes it back up. If I toggle on open Samsung wallets and then go to my home screen here, swiping up on the fingerprint scanner will trigger Samsung Wallet. If I go back, we also have palm swipe to capture, which allows you to take a screenshot by taking your palm and then swiping it across your display. It just took the screenshot. This is something I never use. I just don't find it to be practical, but I do know several friends that really love that gesture. This last tip or trick that I have for you is for anybody that utilizes the navigation gestures rather than the buttons. So if I'm inside of like Chrome and then I go to swipe down here, sometimes it will accidentally send me back because it's triggering the back gesture. It's really annoying. It happens to me all the time. And this is like a little simple fix for that. So what you're gonna do is go into your settings. You're gonna go under display then scroll down and go under navigation bar. Make sure swipe gestures is turned on. Go under more options and then decrease the gesture sensitivity. And this should prevent accidental back gestures from occurring or forward gestures in that case. So it's really helped me a ton and hopefully this helps you as well. So there you go. That was several tips and tricks to try first as soon as you get your Galaxy Z Flip 4. 
If you missed my Z Fold 4 tips and tricks video, make sure to click the card up at the top. There's a lot of great stuff in that video. I've also done tons of other tips and tricks videos for previous flip devices. So I'll link that playlist down in the description if you feel like checking that out as well. I really hope you enjoyed the video. Remember links to any apps that I talked about as well as items that I talked about can be found in the description and the pinned comments. Other than that, I'll see you beautiful people in the next video.